Yo, what's good? Which five minutes your girl? Yo, yo, and I'm back with a new mother freaking video today. We're gonna be talking about sex. <laughs> I know you guys love this topic, so that's what we're gonna be talking about. <laughs> Before we start though, I do want to make it clear that I am not in any way, shape, or form a sex counselor or therapist or like I haven't studied this. This is all pure experience. I guess you could say 24 years worth. Well, not 24 years because I wasn't, you know, doing that when I was a little kid. But you know what I'm trying to say? Like I'm a 24 year old girl and I'm talking to you as if I'm your oldest sister. This is what I went through and hopefully this will help you like if you in a little battle in your head right now hopefully this will help you so first of all how did i lose my v card i lost it when i was 17 18 about that age in my head i was gonna have the movie perfect losing my v card moment experience whatever that did not happen it just it simply just did not happen that way it was very much so in someone's mom's or aunt's crib on a couch yeah on a couch and i feel like it went well it went better than you know for it to be on a, like I, I wanted the whole dream like he takes me to a hotel and there's rose petals everywhere and candles everywhere and it's just romantic or maybe like a bathtub or something. That's not how it was for me. For me, it was literally in his mom's or his aunt's crib on a couch. But what I would say was with somebody who I trusted and someone who showed a lot of respect when it did happen. So it was with someone that we had talked before and I just, I was wasn't ready to commit to this person I didn't see that person in that way and then for some reason we just kept reattracting to each other so at some point we kind of were just like we tried for like a third time and then all of a sudden there was like chemistry that there wasn't before and we were able to put all the other stuff aside and the actual experience was very pleasant like he was very respectful he was very much like making sure I was good he was very gentle all of that stuff so would I change change my first time may not really just because the person was respectful he knew that it was my first time made sure to watch out the whole time if it was okay now i'm not really gonna get into every little detail of everything that happened but me going back to how my relationships are going now it seems like i wish that i would have waited before having sex because once you do that once you break that line that boundary you change you might not know that you changed but literally like after it happened somebody asked me you lost it and I was like huh what are you talking about and he was like you lost it and I was like I was so like baffled because it was like he just knew like this friend of mine just knew and I'm just like what how do you even know that and he's like because the way you're acting you're more open with men now and it's something that I didn't notice at the time but once I really sat there and I thought about it yes you do change how you speak to men how you interact with them it's like something once you're at that physical level with them it's like something changes something shifts and it's hard to really like pinpoint it or whatever but it's very interesting to think about aside from how you act also what you allow and you also think so for me personally I feel like I always viewed my body as like I'm pretty I can get who I want kind of thing not everybody who I wanted like not in a cocky way but most of the time somebody that I was attracted to would be attracted to me back there was there was a couple people that you know I was like damn like they look good but I didn't try and they didn't try and I wish they did my point is just I was attracted to somebody they liked me back and then we would try to proceed and I feel like a misconception or females mind especially when you're younger like especially in that high school stage that high school age it's kind of like you have to have sex to move forward in a relationship or you have to do this in exchange for that or if i'm being honest i feel like it was more of a value thing a worth thing i'm valuable if i have this guy because i put a lot in so this guy has this amount of value because he's famous or because he has money 
or because he's good looking. So all the value I placed it onto these men. That devalues me because the moment that they get what they want, the moment that they get the cookie, that's it. I wouldn't say it's rare to be loved by a man. I don't, I'm not saying that either. But most of the time, and I also, I even read a book about, I've read multiple books about this. Um, if, if you're interested in a good read to get a perspective about men or just the chase in general, I suggest reading either The Art of Seduction by Robert Greene, I believe is his name, or um, Why Men Love Bitches. And I forgot the author's name, but I will put it somewhere here and I'll also list it down below. Both of these books helped me get a perspective about how a man thinks. So in The Art of Seduction, what he talks about is how was my laptop dying already hold on let me charge my laptop real quick so the art of seduction mostly talks about the chase not mostly but a part that i took away from the book is the chase and it's not necessarily a male or a female he speaks very like generally um there are some distinctions between the both but a big trait in men is that they have this primitive sense of catching prey so going all the way back in time there's that primitive sense of a man having to be the provider of having he's physically stronger in more common senses not all the time but generally speaking men are physically stronger so they're more of the protective ones they're more of the ones who have to you know go out and hunt for food the same way that an animal preys on a victim or whatever is the same mentality that men have most men have towards women it's that chase it's the i don't want it if it's too easy and too easy the thing with too easy is we look at that as we tend to look at females toward too easy we bring them down the the problem with this like too easy mentality is she's not too easy because it's bad because she's a bad female she's too easy because she hasn't she feels like that's what's gonna get her love and that's the problem a lot of times females go into things thinking like oh this man genuinely likes me he's shown interest why wouldn't he want to build a relationship or family or whatever and they miss all of those what we call red flags we miss all of those negatives, or we even spin those. So a bad trait that I have is I take the red flags and I love them. My favorite color red <laughs> type shit. Like, oh my God, he's such a bad person, but it's because he grew up this way. And we make excuses for their behavior. But the thing that I learned is that words have to be followed by actions. Even behavior has to be followed by actions. Once I don't see an appropriate action, then how am I going to trust that you're really going to do that? How do I trust that you love me, but you haven't showed me that you love me in any way? The problem with the easy female is that she just takes whatever she can get because she's unloved. She doesn't love herself, maybe. Or she might have daddy issues. The thing is, all of these terms are made so little and are latent so much. But they actually mean so much. Once I place so much value on one man and he rejects me, then I feel like I'm not good enough. Why? Because I placed the value on him and not myself. It wasn't, oh, he's missing out. It's, why wasn't I good enough for him? Because in my mind, I already evaluated him. I already made my decision as to who he is. The reason why he's allowed in my space, in my aura, in my bubble is because he's a great man. But what about me? right a lot of times us females go into it expecting a man to love us wholeheartedly because we are a catch and we're the but what the fuck this one fly oftentimes we go into a relationship thinking that we're the catch that we're the best female that they've ever had that we've had a connection that they've never had before and da, 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 a lot of times that's not the case something my cousin told me and it put a lot of things into perspective is you're a great female but the girl next to you is also great the girl to your left is also great there's no point in putting a female down of saying oh like why was she better than me she wasn't better than you she was just better for him 
she was a better match for him she was able to give him something that you couldn't and unfortunately as fucked up as it sounds it is what it is they call it soulmates for a reason just because you and him have a really good connection and he treats you amazing doesn't mean that he clicks with someone else better as unfortunate as it is i've had to understand that myself as much as I love the man, as much as I care about the man, as much as I do for the man, if he clicks better with another female, then I'm not going to sit here and cry and beg and pout and, oh, you should do this and, oh, you should do that. And why aren't you doing this for me? No, I'm just going to let you walk away because I've given you everything I could give you. And if that was not enough, then you're happy somewhere else. You torment yourself trying to convince a man that he's good enough for you. So I go back to the point that at my age, I regret giving my body up to the people that I have. Why? Because I've done that. I've put my value into other men and that devalues me. The fact that somebody who didn't care about me, who didn't love me, who didn't want me, who all they looked at me was a prey. They looked at me as a prey and they did what they could to get in my pants. And then what? The inevitable, the now he has something to do. Now he has so many life commitments and, and all of these excuses come after, after they get their post nut clarity. You see like the Olympics, I trained my whole life for this one day and I got that gold medal. Now what? On to the next competition. That's what it's like for most men. And I've talked to men myself. I've, I've have a lot of guy friends. For us females, it's a lot of love and respect. And oh my God, this guy is going to be tight. It's a lot of emotions going on when a female has sex. But when a guy, like on that other end, a guy doesn't look at it in the same way. A guy looks at it as this is very passionate. It feels very good. It feels great, but not in an emotional sense, not in an attachment way. Men are more able to have careless sex because they don't attach emotionally. Us females, like our heart is in our punani. I don't know why, but it's down there. It it literally, our heart is down there. And I don't know where their heart is, but it's, it's, not, it's not on their dick. It's not down there. What I'm trying to say from this is be careful who you let around you because at the end of the day that guy's gonna be in you if that's what you decided and there is something i don't know if you've heard of it called soul ties and i've experienced this on one or two occasions the meaning of a soul tie is not scientific like there's no scientific evidence about it but it refers to a relationship that encompasses a deep meaningful attachment between two people this can include romantic friendly or even familiar however the thing about it is when now this is very much on the spiritual realm like not a lot of people believe in this stuff but when you bring your energy around someone else's energy sometimes it's called an energy transfer so when an energy transfer is and i'll give you an example i was at my job and my co my boss actually she was very upset well supervisor she was very upset and i saw her in the break room and i'm like hey like what's wrong and she tells me like a lot of stuff going on with her family and a lot of pressure the second third and i'm like oh i'm so sorry it's gonna get better and i give her a really big hug mind you before she told me this story i was having a great day at work i was laughing smiling jumping up and down like joking around with everybody after i gave her that hug right i got my bags i didn't think nothing of it but i got my bags and everything chill whatever i was walking out of my job and i see her and now she's like smiling and laughing um with another co-worker and i get back home and we were having like a family party like a thanksgiving family party and i was in such a bad mood now i was sad i was upset i was hurt everything people were saying i was just down i was so down what was that that was called an energy transfer the moment that we hugged my energy was transferred onto her because I felt so bad that I wanted her to feel better. It's really hard to explain like spiritual stuff because I'm not so deep into the spirituality stuff. I just believe it, but I don't understand it to a point where I can explain it really, really well. But I feel like that's what that was. Now, when you have sex with someone literally uses this and he is this and it's in there. And now your souls, when you kiss passionately, all of that stuff happens. Think of it this way. Have you ever smelled someone before they walked in? Like someone that you loved. Have you ever smelled them before they came in? Have you ever thought about them 
and then they called or they texted you? Have you had really intense dreams about someone or about other people in the mix, stuff like that? Have you ever had, this is a good one, have you ever had a really bad feeling out of nowhere that something is wrong, something is off, and then you find out the next day or later that day or whatever the case may be that either they got in trouble that night, they got into some type of accident, or they were cheating on you with somebody else, like something really big happens with them, that's a soul tie. When you can literally sense how they're feeling without you seeing them without you being near them you can feel that they're upset that day or you feel upset and you're like why am i upset and then you talk to them and then they tell you like so and so and so and so and so and so is happening i'm like what the fuck i'm feeling what you're experiencing that's a soul tie and that is why i regret giving my body up to people who didn't deserve it people who i was not in a faithful relate not a faithful rela people that i was in a relationship with people that i knew just wanted me for my body people that i didn't see a future with dating without having that end goal what is your end goal why do i want to date what is the purpose of this why am i wasting my time with this person like like at some point in my life i felt like i was just playing a guessing game and i was just being used for it because i was just so desperate to be loved by someone so desperate to be kissed to be touched to be hugged that it was okay to give them everything that is not okay. And I don't, I know it's hard because everybody has a libido. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but everyone has needs. Everyone has frustrations and feelings and stuff that you want to, you want to let out. You know what I'm saying? You want somebody to just grab you and just, you know what I'm saying? Everyone has those urges, those feelings, those needs, especially around a specific time of the month. You know what I'm saying? Like, I definitely get it. This some sometimes you just wanted to be, you know, just grabbed up and just hugged by some big arms. That like, what you end up feeling once they got their trophy, once they got their medal, you're the one that's left feeling empty and broken and sad. And why wasn't I good enough? Because now you see the next bitch, and now you're like, what does she have that I didn't have? Or why didn't he want to stick around? Why why wasn't it me? What could I have done better? Should I wear my hair a different way? No, it ain't about that. Unfortunately, everyone has preferences. Everyone has tastes. The difference between a man and woman, one of the differences between men and women is that a woman can take a whole bunch of red flags and turn them all into green or turn them all yellow. You know, proceed with caution, but I'm going to still proceed anyway, you know? A woman can accept and nurture and love someone for who they are. As long as you have some type of attraction towards that person, you'll fall in love so quickly. The difference is that a man doesn't see it the same way. A man sees you for, you know, what you look like first. And for him, it's not as deep. It's It's not as important. You know, a man cannot get pregnant. A man will never understand what it's like. To have your life flipped upside down for them it's more about the catch like this girl looks pretty and i want to hit for us for most of us it's not that same way for us we want a deep emotional connection men hide from that they run from that they fear that you know they don't want someone that's going to bring out their vulnerabilities and is going to question every move that they make like they run from that commitment of having to be there for that person in some type of capacity i think there's no need to put a man down for that either that's just his personal choice and he's not ready he's not ready to commit but you don't deserve to be with someone that's not ready to commit and someone that's not ready to love you the way that you deserve you deserve to be with someone that can wait for you and you'll know when the right moment is and i just wish i had someone to tell me to slow the fuck down don't let him hit just because he says nice words and he does nice things and he's there for you and he makes you laugh and he calls you beautiful all the time. That's not enough because you have an end goal. And the more times that someone Fs you and then leaves you, you become broken and more broken and more broken and more broken. And you get to a point where you don't even know who you are. You don't know how to love anymore. 
you feel helpless, you feel broken, you feel used, you feel really used and hurt and you give up on love. And I don't want that for anyone. Um, And I say this because I am a female, because I know what it's like to feel like, well, damn, I wasn't good enough for the last couple. What means that I'm going to be good enough for the next, you know, and you're too good to to be used by any man just for sex value yourself more because at the end of the day all that they get is a free nut that's all they get out of it and a chip on their shoulder that they can say oh yeah i hit that no be untouchable be the girl that they couldn't hit be the girl that they wish they could have but never did be the girl that everyone wanted but they couldn't touch they couldn't get near her they couldn't get her to you know and they can't have nothing on you don't care about oh they're gonna think i'm too i'm I'm too good enough for everyone. No, it doesn't matter. Protect yourself, protect your aura, protect your space, protect, protect your vibe, protect your energy. You know, busty, dusty, bummy man should be allowed near you. No man that's not going to give you what you want and what you seek is going to be good enough for you. Because the same way that there are plenty women, there are more men. I'm pretty sure you're a beautiful looking girl and you can get any man. And the next man will treat you better. I can keep talking about this topic. I could keep talking about this topic for days, okay? But I do, I don't know. I feel like I always wanted someone to tell me that. Or I wish there was somebody who told me things like these. So I'm going to make this like a little series, like... I don't know, like a little podcasty kind of series because I feel like I really do sound kind of good on this mic. You know what I mean? There's so much different things that you could talk about when it comes to, you know, having a sex life and, and relationships and love and all of those things. And again, this is all just my opinions. This is nothing um, clinical or studied or nothing like that. This is just my pure experiences that, you know, hopefully you either find entertaining or educational or you just take it into consideration. And next time a dusty, busty nigga try to fuck, you think about yo-yo and you're like, hmm, is he worth being in my space? In my aura, is he worth having to taste of this? Yum, yum. Okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I don't know what my next video is going to be. Maybe it's going to be another one of these. Maybe it's going to be a vlog. I like to keep it. I like to keep y'all on your toes. I like to be spontaneous with it. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that, you know, hit the little notification bell so you know the next time that I post a new video. And yeah, I'm gonna catch you guys in the next mother freaking video. Bye.